I'm back. Uh, great to see you all again. I hope you're all having a really, really good week. Now, uh, just to cover something, first of all, um, I've decided to try and ramp up my YouTube videos quite a bit recently. Uh, I really want to try and be doing a video a week uh, more realistically with my photography schedule and everything at the moment. Um, probably going to be more like two weeks. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do click the subscribe button below and click the bell icon as well just to, uh, just to be kept up to date with videos that I post. Um, today, what I wanted to do is focus on a piece of software, um, and this has come from, as many of my other videos do, from reading comments on Facebook and YouTube and, and places like that. Um, and the software that I wanted to run through was an HDR software. Um, I've used a lot of different HDR softwares in the past. I started off using Lightroom, and that was okay. This did the job, um, good for still photography, but when it comes to 360, I really didn't find that it was accurate or detailed enough. Um, then I went on to use Photomatics, which was which was really, really good. Um, but again, I wasn't really happy with the results that I was getting and, and the, the sort of the realism of the HDR processing. Uh, so what I then went on to use was SNS HDR and I haven't stopped using it since. It is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, the reason why it's so good is because the, the blending it does is so realistic um, and the control that you have over shadows and highlights and bl blacks and whites and contrast and all sorts of things is, is really, really, really impressive. So um, today, yeah, I wanted to just run through SNS HDR with you. Um, yeah, so let's go and take a look at it on the computer. Okay, so here we are in the main dashboard of SNS HDR Pro. Now, just to cover something, first of all, um, for all of you still photographers out there, uh, or normal photographers, <laughs> um, I am going to be focusing mainly on editing a 360 image on this. Um, that's one of the main areas of my business. Uh, and the other reason why I wanted to do that is just basically to show off the batch processing tool, uh, which I find incredibly useful for 360 HDR editing. Um, so to start off, what we need to do is click in the very, very top left hand corner here to import our images. Now, these images are ones that I have previously edited in Lightroom. Um, the reason why I do that, if I just open up this image here, is just to make sure that I bring the highlights down of the most overexposed image to make sure that, uh, that there's no blowing out um, or clipping on the, uh, on the whites on there. Um, so what we'll do is we'll select the first three images here. Um, the reason I'm doing this um, is because what I want to do is, is make sure that the exposure is good for the interior and the exterior as well. And then using the batch processing tool, we'll apply this to all the other ones and then it will all match together. So if we click on open, um, I'll keep a line images checked, even though I took this on a tripod and ghost reduction, um, I don't think anything moved in the image, but again, it's always worth uh, worth keeping that checked. 360 panorama mode, I'm going to keep off for now, um, but because we are creating a 360 image, you'll see later on in the batch process up here um, that uh, that we will, we will enable that. Size reduction, I don't want any size reduction on there, so I want to keep the highest resolution possible. Click on OK, and then it will start doing its magic. Now, it doesn't take too long at all. In fact, it's pretty quick. I have got a reasonably fast computer. Um, so uh, you'll generally find that uh, the faster the process you have, the, the, the quicker this will, this will work. But um, I find that it is a pretty, pretty fast program. Okay, so there we go. So that's the image that, uh, that's created with its default settings. Um, so it automatically um, just puts in the, the settings that it feels it should have on there. Um, I have got some presets that I've already got made um, or, or I've, I've previously made on here. Uh, and I would recommend uh, when you first bring an image into SNS HDR, um, you sort of do your adjustments and move everything about and, and just, just have a play around with these sliders. That's the best way to learn this program. You can see straight away there that it's made, a, made an improvement. Um, you bring the highlights down a little bit there. Um, open up the shadows a bit more if you wanted to. 
Uh, I mean, I, th I think I find that everyone's got their own taste when it comes to editing images. Some like them slightly underexposed, some people like them slightly overexposed and bright and airy. That's the the uh, the way that I tend to uh, to, to go. Um, now, on the left hand side here, you've got a number of different presets. Uh, if I just turn this off, which are my user presets, these are all the default ones that come with with SNS, uh, and then I can turn on and my user presets there and turn off the SNH, S, can't talk, SNS ones. Um, so I've just got the ones that I've actually saved. Um, so yeah, so we'll see here that that adjustment I've done, if I turn it to my one, just hover over that, it shows the preset as that is. And this one I've got here is actually slightly better. Um, so yeah, that, from straight off, that's actually a pretty good result. So I can, I, can, I can play around with this a little bit more if I wanted to, um, just to look at the mid-tones and everything. And, but yeah, that's a pretty good result so far. The, the white balance outside is slightly off. Um, and one way you can do that, um, I don't personally do this, but there is a masks feature. Um, so you can actually add a mask by painting or using a dropper tool or a gradient or a radial gradient. Um, so you could, technically paint in here and then adjust that gives you a separate adjustment for just that area there um, what I tend to do with this um, is let's get rid of that um, is use Photoshop for it um, so what I would do is after I've actually created the whole image is select these windows here um, and then uh, just uh, just adjust the white balance outside slightly for that Okay, now um, just going back to the sliders here, they are very, very well laid out. So obviously you've got your brightness at the top here, you've got your contrast, um, and if you do ever change something you want to revert back to how it was, you just right click it um, or double click it and it will go back to zero. But if you right click it, it will go back to what it was set to when you opened uh, when you open up the image. Um, you've also got, um, as well as all of these here, you've got an advanced tab. Now the advanced tab gives you the option for mid-tone contrast, which is nice for uh, just sort of fine tuning that, uh, that contrast in the mids there. Um, emphasizing light is a very, very clever little, little tool. Um, it basically just brings up the brightness of the image and somehow it doesn't really tend to affect the, the highlights too badly at all. Uh, you do need to be slightly careful with it and just keep an eye on the image. Um, and you can do that by sort of zooming in um, and moving around and just making sure that nothing's going going too crazy on there. Um, there we go. Uh, details will in say increase the, increase and decrease the details on there. So obviously we've got some nice wallpaper in here. So we can, we might want to just see where that's at before. Just boost those details a little bit. Um, clarity is going to increase that even more. So I'll leave that. And then you have got white balance adjustments here and um, vibrance and hue and also your red, green and blue adjustments. So you can do all of that in here. Again, personally, I tend to do all of that in um, in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. So um, yeah, uh, there is also a curves tool at the bottom. So you've got a lot of control um, over, over your image on here. But I would say from there, um, just for the sake of this video, I am happy with that. So now what we would do from there uh, sorry you can see here a before and after there you go so that's the the the, the low um i can't think of the word the low exposure compared to the the blended one um going over here this is where the batch process comes in and this is where this software really 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 shines for my 360 workflow um so what i would do is click on batch process and choose the folder that i want here so it's gone here so it will be Lightroom edit so all the photos are within this folder here that I selected earlier click select and the images you have to choose what file um, type they are in uh, I do generally export my images after I've done the uh, the adjustments in Lightroom in JPEG uh, many of you may disagree with that I have done, have done them in TIFF before um, you can, it does accept all sorts of different formats you can do RAWs um, and uh, everything like that but I do generally tend to um, export them from Lightroom as JPEG. Uh, it's three exposures 
So you can do any number of exposures up to, well, wow, up to 20. God, that'd be a lot of dynamic, dynamic range in there. Uh, size reduction, I don't want any aligning images. Yes, ghost reductions, yes. And this is where I want the 360 panorama mode switched on. Um, and what that will ensure is that there's no sort of stitching lines or seam lines or anything like that um, between the exposures of each uh, each 360 that you've taken. Um, I, don't, I What I do is I keep this ticked here subfolder. Um, so it just basically creates a subfolder within uh, no, wrong one. within uh, within the folder that I had before within this Lightroom Edits folder. So I have another folder for the SNS results. Uh, but there are a number of other choices that you can have on there. File name I just keep based on the source files, but again you can change that. Exif data you can choose whether to remove that or store it. GPS data if you have that. Um, I took this with my Sony A7 III, uh, which doesn't have the GPS on there, so. Keep that unticked. Convert to sRGB, yes, um, because obviously that's the best uh, color space to use for web viewing. Um, and the processing. Now, this is the, the really, really cool part is that the mode uh, is automatic, but what but what I want to do is use the preset um, of the current settings. So if you have adjusted all of these sliders, um, you don't have to do them all individually. You can just say, right, I want it to take the current settings that I've got and apply those to every single image that I'm going to chuck at it. So um, now I'm going to click start. Here we go. And then you'll have a little percentage timer at the top uh, showing you the progress of the processing. Now, this part, obviously, it's dealing with a lot of photos. Um, so it, it, this can take a bit of time. Uh, what I will do is I will fast forward through the video now, um, but I will also be timing it. In fact, let me do that now just to get an idea of how long it takes. Stopwatch, start now. We'll add a few more seconds on. So let's see. Okay, that took three minutes and 22 seconds. So um, let's add another, what, 15, 20 onto that. Um, so yeah, just between three and four minutes, which uh, which is pretty, pretty good. So click close. Um, now I'm gonna go back up here and find the folder. Here we go. So. It, that's what it's done. It's created a folder within my Lightroom edits, and these are all the images here. So if I just open that here, I don't know why this this Windows image view is terrible. Let's see if I can do it with something else. There we go. I can view much better. There we go. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And the top one. You see, you see there how it's how you've got all the dynamic range under here. The lights don't look blown out. Um, I've got the nice starburst effect on because I took these at f. I think it was f11, something like that. Um, and then the floor shots here. Okay. Um, so what I'll do very quickly, just for the purposes of our oh, oh crikey, I downloaded the new version of PC Curry. I can't do it unless I just. This is going to put a watermark over there, but I need to change back to version 11. But I've been very impressed with people that have tried it out um, so far with version 12. PTQ, if you're listening, please give me a, a code for it. <laughs> um, here we go. So open a line. And then I will add my template onto here. Great. So I'm not going to bother doing anything else. Just want to preview this just so I can show you the seamless blending between each image on here. <clears throat> if you do have any questions about this, then please do leave them in the comments below. Um, always, I do always try to get back to 
everyone's questions. Uh, previously, I wasn't pretty rubbish at that. God, there's watermarks everywhere. But there we can go. There we go. Look at that. That's a pretty impressive result, if you ask me. Obviously, I haven't taken that out, but I don't need to do that just for, just to look at this. Um, then what I would do after that, after stitching this, is uh, is I would normally do some um, some secondary edits on there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, there are a few other things that you can do on here which I haven't really covered, but you can change things like the background colour of here and 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 whatnot. There's a few other bits and pieces and yeah um so thank you very very much for your time again and uh yeah as i say if you do have any questions do please leave them in the comments and as previously mentioned um i will try and do as many youtube videos as i can moving forwards and please do stick around for the next few minutes because if you are interested in getting sns hdr pro i am able to offer you a bit of a discount so thanks very much for watching i think you'd agree that the, it's a pretty impressive program and uh, i really hope that you do give it a try uh, if you do decide to try out sns hgi you can do with a free trial and i am also offering a 15 percent discount off sns hgr and to get that discount uh, just click on the link below in the description which will take you to my website um, and then there'll be a button on there to, to purchase it with 15% off. Uh, thank you so much for your time and I will see you again soon. Take care.